So, Sadhguru, you've talked about well-being. I've, um, you know, one of the things that you say is it's all about how the body, mind, emotions, and most importantly, energy come together. And I think you've said it very eloquently, which says, you know, when the body is feeling pleasant, we call it health. If it is feeling very pleasant, we call it pleasure, and so on. And you go you can, on to you say, can go all the way. Sorry? You can go all the way. I can go all the way? <laughs> so when the mind is feeling pleasant, we call it uh, joy. When it is feeling uh, very pleasant, we call it uh, peace. When the, um, you know, when the emotion is feeling pleasant, we call it love. When it is feeling very pleasant, we call it compassion. When the energy is feeling pleasant, we call it bliss. And when it is very pleasant, we call it... You're a it very good student. So. So here's the question, can you just elaborate on what you really mean? What is the difference between bliss and ecstasy? You know, for, for people who are not mystics, what does, what does it look like? I think I need to clarify this accusation of being a mystic. <laughs> uh, on a certain day, two cows were grazing mm -hmm. on the English meadow, English cows. Got it. The Thomas Hardy kind. <laughs> One cow said to the other, mm -hmm. what is your opinion about the mad cow disease? The other one said, I don't care a hoot, I'm anyway a helicopter <laughs> So what a mystic means is, that there is no mistake about his perception as to who he is. Okay. So there are only two kinds of people, mystics <laughs> and mistakes. That's an easy one to remember. So, a mystic did not fall from somewhere else, strive to pay attention to simple aspects of life, very simple things. Very simple things means extremely simple things. Just right now, how do you know that you're here? What is the basis, I'm asking? I am talking with you. Even when you're not speaking, you still know that you're here, right? Yeah. So how do you know? I'm perceiving… What? …that I am in this place, there is an audience here. We're in conversation. No, even if you close your eyes, you're still here, right? I have here, a right? mindfulness, I'm attentive to the fact that I'm in conversation, I'm conscious. You're conscious? I'm conscious. The reason that you know that you are here is because you're conscious. Mm -hmm. How do you know that you have a body? Because I can move my hand. So many things can move. But I am causing my hand to move. Fine, even if you don't move, you know it's there, right? Yeah. How do you know? Um. Because there is sensation in the body, yep. right? Yep. If no sensation in your body, you wouldn't know whether it's here or not. True. No consciousness, you wouldn't know whether you're here or not. Right. Yes? Yep. So these are s taken for granted things. If you pay little attention to these things, you will see there's a whole world out there. There's a whole existence by itself, just your sensation. If you pay enough attention, you know the nature of your physical existence. If you pay attention to what you're calling as my consciousness, you know the nature of your, your basic existence. Once you know the nature of your existence, that is when you can use this gadget well. I'm calling this a gadget because human mechanism is the most sophisticated mechanism on the planet. We are on top of the evolutionary heap, not for nothing. It's taken millions of years to manufacture you, yes? Yep. Not, not a simple process, an enormous process has happened to get you to this level of neurological sensitivity, sensations, awareness, everything. So these are the keys of your existence. But everybody is reading a book or they're looking into… they're looking at the cosmos through their iPhone. Nobody's paying attention to this because this is the basis of your existence. Only if you know this, you can employ this to its fullest capability. 
Even if you take your uh, cell phone, the more you know about it, the better you can use it, isn't it? Right. The same with this. <coughs> so what this whole unnecessarily mm, exaggerated, exaggeration is not the word, unnecessarily uh, decorated thing about self-realization means is, you know more about this or you know everything that's worth knowing about this. That means you can use this whichever way you want. If you want to sit still here for the rest of your life, you can sit. If you want to jump out and be active, you can do. If you want to do this and that together, you can do. Whatever you want, you can do because you know the mechanism fully in its entirety, not just the physicality of it, but its entirety. So if you know this, suppose your body happens as per your instruction, your mind happens as per your instruction, your life energies happen as per your instruction, how will you keep it? Pleasant or unpleasant? Pleasant. Pleasant. At least for yourself, highest level of pleasantness. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, but <laughs> what you want for yourself is clear. So when you mean… when you want pleasantness, now generally, if you are very pleasant, we say you are blissful. Now, bliss can get boring sometimes, okay? <laughs> yes? Good to Pleasantness gets boring, isn't it, sometimes? You want some slosh to happen, now you use ecstasy. <laughs> but that slosh cannot be kept up. Bliss can be kept for your entire life. Ecstasy cannot be kept for your entire life. You go up and you come down. Or in other words, bliss is a sustainable level of pleasantness, the height of pleasantness. Ecstasy is not sustainable, but you can hit it often enough, at least a few times in a day you must hit it.